Hello everyone, so good to see you today. This is Pastor Donna Hankler with the Big Four PH Church in Kimball, West Virginia. I hope y'all have had a great week and here we are, spring is supposed to be coming really soon, hopefully this week, and, and we're hoping for some warm weather and we'll get to see beautiful flowers, the birds coming back. I know it's an exciting time and seeing spring, people are getting excited about their gardens and planting things outside. So we're praying for warm weather and warm sunshine for our region. Well, that goes right along with the message today called Light versus Light. And you're thinking, well, what does that mean? Light versus light. And you know, it's an important topic because Jesus is the light of the world, but the devil, he, he dresses like an angel of light. He appears, masquerades as an angel of light too. He can be deceiving. And as a matter of fact, the devil was, he was the son of morning, Lucifer. He was a bright angel at one time before he fell. So we're talking about light versus light and what does that have to do with you? Now stay with me to the very end because I'm going to read to you a book about to hell and back. I'm not going to read the whole book. I'm going to read an episode about a man that was defibrillated and he was looking for that light as he was descending uh, in his death and, and of course he was brought back. This is a very good book for, for me to hell and back from Maurice Rollins because I worked several years in cardiac rehab and you know, had to learn all the EKGs and the ACLS which is a very difficult protocol learning how to rescue people with medications and the defibrillator. I actually had to do two codes in my lifetime, participated in that, and they were very interested. One person was dead, and they just, suddenly as we did the code, they came right back to life. We saw them go into death, they went into death, they come back to life. The other code that we had done, the person did not return back from life. So a lot of you all work in that type of field and you understand it. But understanding God's light and the true light cannot be even any more important than when you're facing death. And we're going to talk about that as one man is being defibrillated. We're going to relate his story. So, Father, I just pray today that your spirit would be with us, that you would that you would direct us and, and, and anoint us and, and that people would hear and understand and receive God's light into their lives and into their situations. In Jesus' name. Remember that we are on YouTube and we have been able to reach out to people and we're asking you if you would to subscribe. That does not mean that you have to pay anything, but you get notifications. Uh, we're asking you to give a like. Every week I ask somebody to, to give a like or give a comment, and a lot of people don't. It's very simple. It means a lot because it, it, it shows that we're participating on YouTube and getting the gospel out to encourage people right in their homes all across the world is very important in this day and age. So help us do that. We do have a giving link for those that want to give into this ministry as we work to get the gospel out. So I want to talk to you today about light versus light. There cannot be a greater example than in Matthew chapter 4, and so we're going to start right there. When Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. And when the tempter came unto him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil takes him up into a holy city and sets him up on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. And the devil takes him again to the exceedingly high mountain, and he shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to him, All of these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only will you serve. And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. 
So I want us to see in this situation, Jesus is the light. But yet the devil was coming and trying to make everything sound like it's okay. After all, Jesus hadn't eaten in a long time. What could be wrong with turning those stones into bread? Well, you know, it, Jesus, he quotes God's word because the devil is trying to get him to sin. And so we've just got a little picture of that. Jesus in the wilderness and the devil trying to tempt him and trying to appear that that things are not so bad. And maybe you've encountered that before too. Maybe you have felt being in a, a wrong crowd of people that said, look, it's not bad to do a little of this or a little of that, but you know in your heart that it's wrong. Maybe you've been with people that have been involved in gossip or murmuring and complaining. They say, well, it's not bad to say a few things like this, but you know in your heart that it's wrong. The devil will say, well, it's not really that bad, but it, a little bad is bad. It, it was Jesus would not get involved in any way in what the devil wanted him to do. And you see, Jesus, it tells us in Matthew 5, 16, to let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If you're a Christian, you're going to have God's light and love shining through you and reaching out to people around you. And then I love John 8, 12. Jesus spoke to them. He said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So we, we see that light is important and that God is light. Jesus is light. I want us to look at Acts chapter 9 with the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Here was a man that he's written a good part of the, the New Testament, but this did not happen until he had, ex, had a, an encounter with the light. And you know, Paul had been, he knew the scriptures. He, he was called Saul at that time. He had been trained in the scriptures at that time. They had to memorize the first five books of the Bible, but yet he had not had an encounter, a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. He saw Jesus, he heard Jesus, but he did not open up his heart to receive Jesus. Rather, he took a, a dark stand against Jesus. He criticized his followers and his people, and yet he saw people healed, people raised from the dead. But God was about to change that. And you know, so many of us need an encounter with Jesus in his light. You know, maybe things are dark in your life. Maybe they're dark in your finances. Maybe they're dark in your family. Maybe they're dark at your job. Maybe you just you just need God's light. His light is there for you. Well, when we read about Apostle Paul and his journey on the road to Damascus, we get a true example of God's light changing people and, and giving them an encounter with him. You see, in Acts 9, Paul was breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. And he went to the high priest and he asked the high priest of letters to go to Damascus to the synagogue that if he found any of them, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. He got legal letters to arrest them because they were Christians. And as he journeyed, he came near to, Jamas to Damascus and suddenly there shined a light about him, a light from heaven. He did not expect this. Here was Paul and his men, and suddenly a light shined so bright from heaven that it, it, it basically it just blinded him and his horse. And it says he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. You know, there are so many people like that today that don't know who Jesus is. If he appeared to them, they wouldn't know who he is. They would be like Paul. They'd say, who are you, Lord? And that's a good question is to ask God, who are you? And let him reveal himself to you. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told of you. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless. They heard a voice, but they did not see a man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and he said to him, 
Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here. And so we know that Ananias was sent to pray for Paul and to teach him and to pray for him for his sight to be returned. So we see that Paul had an encounter with the light of Jesus Christ. And you know, we have this scripture in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You know, the devil and his demons do everything they can to keep us from the light of God and to hide that glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But God, with prayer, our eyes can be opened and we can see and know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. You know, the light of Satan, even in the Garden of Eden, Satan appeared to Eve in, in a manner that did not seem wrong because it says in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 14, no wonder since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So it is no great surprise if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. But their end will correspond with their deeds. You know, Satan likes to appear that he's not so bad, that he's a good guy. And we see in Genesis that he came to Eve, and I know that you know the story, but we'll just take a minute and, and look at a little of it. He came in a manner that he he didn't really scare her. I mean, the snake at that point didn't really scare her. She had seen different things like that in the Garden of Eden. And so he came to her, and it says he was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field. And the Lord said to him, uh, he, and he said unto the woman, Has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So we know that he came to her in a manner that did not frighten her, in a manner that did not startle her. He came to her in a manner that made him appear as like an angel of light. And so she was deceived. And, and he, she, you know, eventually ate of that fruit of the tree and gave them to Adam. Now, as we're studying about light, we see that Satan can masquerade as an angel of light. And we want to look at a very interesting scripture in Isaiah 50, 11. Behold, all of you that kindle a fire with sparks, walk in the light of your own fire, and the sparks that you have kindled, this shall you have of my hand, and you shall lie down in sorrow. Behold, all of you that kindle a fire with sparks, walk in the light of your own fire, and in the sparks that you have kindled, this shall you have on mine hand, you shall lie down in sorrow. This basically is talking about relying on our own self, our own pride, making it our own way, saying a person that doesn't give God the glory, a person that says that they don't need God. And this is like King Nebuchadnezzar, he had built Babylon up and Daniel had talked to him but yet he was filled with pride and you know King Nebuchadnezzar the king spoke and said is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty even while he spoke these words judgments came upon him and he became as a beast in the field you know that was his pride that brought him down and that he built his own fire, so to speak. So just a couple more scriptures about light and we see in Matthew 4, 22 and 23, if we could go there just a minute. Okay. Excuse me. Let me go to, let me go to Proverbs. I think I would rather go to Proverbs 1530 because that's more in relations to what we're talking about. Proverbs 15, okay. Y'all join me here, bear with me as we get our scriptures together. Proverbs 15, 30 and 31. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart and a good report makes the bones fat. In our eyes, God's light shines in our eyes. Our light, we can see God's light shining through us. If we're a Christian, we can see that God loves us. Well, it's so, so important that we know the true light. And I'm going to protect the identity of this person. 
And he, he also, this, this doctor re- quotes this scripture, No wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So the story goes that they are on the treadmill doing a stress test, and this man, he, he suddenly has these uh, beats, ventricular beats that are fast-paced beats, and suddenly he flatlines, and he begins to just, he falls back. His eyes rolled up in his head, and he fell, and the treadmill sweeping the body away. This reminded me of similar problems occurring in the heart lab where the heartbeat stops for some reason, but amazingly, the patient continues to talk for a while. So they did the chest, they hit him on the chest, they did the procedures, they did CPR, and the, and the nurse said that she breathed the breath of life to him, the kiss of life, and they gave him IVs. And this man, he began to recover. And, and it says, when I pushed on his chest, the heart would stop and his eyes would roll back and he would sputter, he would begin to convulse. He was ha- he thought They thought he was having hallucinations, but he says, I'm in hell, I'm in hell. Don't give up on me. He was saying, don't stop, don't you understand? Every time you let me go, I go back to hell when they would stop doing the the defibrillation. And when he asked me to pray for him, the doctor did pray the prayer of salvation for him, and he did recover, and he lived a full life. So we want our lives to receive the true light of Christ. And I pray that you will receive God's light today.